So over the years, I've replaced hundreds of components in TVs and other consumer electronic equipment. And just for the fun of it, I started saving a bunch of the parts that I replaced just to see what were the most common failure components. And what I've got on the table here are just a few of what I've replaced. And I thought it'd be interesting just to uh, see the quantities of different components and, the, and their failure rates. So for example, in this batch down here, I came up with six switching regulators that were bad, three triax, 14 end channel MOSFETs, and if you don't know where these components are located in your power supply, often when you look inside of a power supply, you'll see a heat sink, nice piece of metal like this, or it might end up having fins on it like this, but whatever the case, anytime you see a big heat sink like that in a power supply and you see these components that are screwed down to the heat sink, they're always in areas of uh, suspicion to me if the power supply is not working right because they, they often do short out. That could be true with a regulator and or a uh, end channel MOSFET. Now a lot of these uh, transistors are used to to dump power into the transformer. If you know anything about transformers you know that they won't pass DC so it has to be pulsed. So when these uh, transistors are pulsed or pulsing the power into the transformer they're working awful hard and that's why they often fail. The same was true with the older style TVs that had the horizontal output transistors. Anybody that uh, was a TV repairman in the old days knew all about horizontal output transistors because they were such a money maker for us. These things would go bad all the time. And much like the uh, power MOSFETs, they also would switch uh, pulsed energy into the flyback transformer. And because they worked awful hard, they were often uh, high, an item of high failure as well as the vertical integrated circuits. This is another thing every repair shop had to have quite a few of. I've still got a lot of them left over now that we don't have cathode ray tubes anymore. So another component I've seen fail quite often are the um, diodes. Diodes are a fairly high failure item, or at least they used to be. I'm not sure about nowadays. I've seen a, quite a few diodes go bad over the years. They're an easy item to check. I'd say number one has been capacitors, of course. There was one particular company, that was the name of it, I guess you call it Cap Exxon. They produced thousands and thousands of capacitors that were using consumer electronic equipment that made a lot of us repairmen money. And uh, from the repairman's point of view, it was actually kind of a nice thing because we could count on a lot of uh, repairs based on the fact that the capacitors were going bad. But uh, over the years, they've corrected the problem and you don't you don't see as many bad capacitors as you would in the old days. Uh, let me see another component that I've we'd see fail quite a while, or quite often rather, the inverter transformers. Well, now that TVs are switching over to LEDs, this is another thing you're not going to see that often anymore. By the way, I've had a lot of guys uh, call me up asking for a little troubleshooting help, and they'd often tell me, you know, I'd. I checked out all of my capacitors in the power supply and I didn't see any problems so uh, you know what what could it be and I'd, I'd question them a while to find out they didn't take the time to really test the capacitor to see if they if there was any problem they would just look for swelling if they didn't see a swelling they would assume everything was okay and that's simply not the case in fact here's one that uh, you can see is looks perfect on the top and yet it was a bad capacitor so, common mistake. Um, let me see. Oh, another thing I was going to say. This is this is something I encountered that I thought was rather interesting. This is a cable. It's just a jumper cable. It could go from a VCR between a VCR and a TV. And I happened to use this one time on a on a TV in between the antenna and the television set, and it it blocked two of my channels from coming through. And there's nothing wrong with the cable as far as you know. It didn't have any opens or shorts and yet it still blocked the signal so it had some kind of an impedance mass mis mismatch and you know I never would have uh, thought that would be possible with such a short run of coax but it was actually preventing a couple channels from coming through and uh, I guess that's about it I just thought it covers some of those fundamentals or maybe one last thing here this here's something I forgot to mention the batteries you know it naturally I've had to replace dozens of batteries over the years 
and you know battery is always a fairly easy thing to test but something I've encountered on more than one occasion was a battery that tested good but it had no amperage capacity to it so the minute you put any kind of a load on it it would drop down to zero I thought that was rather interesting to actually see that batteries could tech check just fine and yet when you put a load on them they had no capacity anyway I think I've said enough for now as always I hope you like the video if you do please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe